Hello, friends, and it's Funny Play Brothers, and please remember to subscribe to YouTube. And they were re uh, reading He Man and the Master of the Universe, Tales of Attorney, The Hunt for Mass Man, an animated Netflix series, New York Times Best Selling Author, Gregory Mon, Book One, Chapter Six, Part One, because this chapter is long. <clears throat> Chapter 6. He crashed to the bottom of an earth, earthen, earthen pit, slamming his shoulder into the dirt. When he sat up, he was tangled in massive branches, leaves and netting. A wet leaf was plastered to the side of his face. He peeled off, pulled in a few sticks off of his hair, stood up, and studied his surroundings. The pit was, was twice as deep as he was tall. The animals was far out of reach and the sides were all mud and dirt, with no handholds, even the roots sticking out of the soil had been severed. There was no hope of climbing out. Above him, an unfamiliar voice called out, Got you! The foul stench strengthened as the orange light glowed above him. A touch, a torch extended out of the rim and of the pit, held there by an arm covered in thick black hair, not a human arm, either slowly the creature came, into view, and Adam had never seen anything like it. The beast had two arms and legs and stood about as tall as a normal human adult. Its eyes were small but bright, and its slightly open mouth revealed a set of razor-sharp teeth. The nose of the animal was brown, brownish-black, rough-skinned, and it stood out promin promptly of the creature's face. But what, what truly disgusted the creature was the thick color of black hair that covered its entire body including most of its face and the wide white stripe that extended from the top of its head down its back up along its thick tail adam nearly jumped skunk the creature snarled i'm not a skunk and you are no moss man what are you doing in my trap this isn't for humans adam was stalled the animal sounded like a person sorry he said I didn't mean, I didn't mean to fall, to fall in here. But wait, you trying to catch Mossman? Yes, and you're ruining everything. Plus, why are you looking at me so strangely? Haven't you ever seen one of my kind before? Um, no. What are you, you exactly? I'm an odd fierce, The creature said, turning to reveal the full length of its thick tail and his glorious appendage should help you recognize my best species. Adam. Shrug, no, sorry, no clue. I'm Pelise. Pelise, what art do you, do they teach you in, you, in school? I'm in school with a bunch of tigers, Adam ex explained. Most we, we learn about leadership, teamwork, hunting, and grooming. Last year I learned how to lick my hands clean. It's weird but effective. The Pelise paused. For a moment, well, since you are so in inducted, I will do you the honor of introducing my race. We are hardly intelligent species. We're skilled diggers and trappers, as you see. He added motions, prowling at the pit. But humans find us revolting, true to our unique odor. Whenever we try to settle in a new home, you sensitive humans chase us away. We're not actually n nomadic, but the humans force us to... Wander Eternia. Adam crinkled his nose. The smell was definitely terrible, but he didn't want to offend Artifice. He smelled, felt bad for police too. That would be horrible to have people chasing you out of every place you tried to settle. I don't know what bothers them, Adam said. I don't notice anything. The police planted in his torch and dirt beside him. The flame glowed over the pit. His yellow eyes mirrored. Really? You don't find my sense repulsive? Adam didn't want to lie, but he didn't want to hurt the pleasons' feelings either. Even if the creature didn't currently have him trapped in an inescapable pit, Adam shrugged, it's certainly not worth chasing you out of your home for, he said. Could I get used to it? For a moment, he started him quietly. Then, muttering, the police reached into a bag slug flung over his shoulder. You moved a small glass ball with a nozzle on top. It's funny you should say that about getting used to the smell. 
he began. I figured maybe the problem is that humans don't smell enough of us, you know? They're turned off because they're not accustomed to our naturally magnificent odor, so I created a more concentrated version of our scent. He tossed the bottle down to Adam. Who caught it? What do you think? Adam turned the glass vial around in his hands. There was no label, no name either. Cool bottle, he said. How's it selling? Terrible, Alphys confessed. I'm guessing it's a marketing problem at first. I wanted to call it Scent of the Woods, maybe, or the odor of Odpheus. Neither worked very well, though my latest idea is a little different. What do you think of Stinkor? Adam couldn't think of how to respond to that. Would it be possible to think of a worse name? No, probably not, but he didn't want to hurt the police's feelings, so he nodded along silently. Alfie stood at the edges of the pit and gazed up in his, the air as if he were picturing the banner of the illuminated advertising headlines shining above the city of Eternos. I can almost see the tagline. Alfie continued, Stink or nature's most pungent perfume. He swung back around and faced out. And one day, everyone in Eternos will be spraying themselves. Suddenly comfortable, Alfie sat on the rim of the dirt prison. His huge feet dangled over the side. They er, they were padded at the bottom, not hairy, and thick, pointy claws extended out from each of his toes instead of nails. I'm still working on the formula, though. Alfie said, said the current version it has some un unfortunate side effects. Like what, Adam asked? It kind of kills plant life. Kind of. No, Alfie said, definitely I'll work out the kinks. Eventually, I'll find a way for us to settle somewhere. Then he sighed and shook his head. I'll tell you, it's not easy being Parisian. Adam ran one of his fingers along the dirt wall of the pit. I can only imagine it's not all great being trapped in here either. Would you mind letting me out? Arfis lifted a paw to his forehead, then dropped a rope down into the pit. I'm so sorry. I should have thrown that down earlier and hurry. Two, if you don't mind, I need to rebuild the trap to catch my prey. Adam pocketed the perfume, grabbed the rope, yanked it on twice to test that it was secure, and planted his feet on the side of the pit. Leaning back, he walked his way up as he gripped the rope hand over hand. When he finally reached the top, Odpheus quickly set to work resetting the trap. Why are you trying to catch Mossman? Adam asked. And how do you know he's here? Odpheus pulled the net tight of the pit, then scattered leaves and brushes across the top. He began to explain, because I tracked him here. I've been tracking him for years. You see, I need him. My fellow Felizans need him. Or more precisely, we need his moss flower. What's a moss flower? Adam asked. They bloom on his body. His, like, chest hair. What's chest hair? Never mind. Odpheus looked at him curiously. Before continuing, his moss flower can counteract our natural Polesian scent. I've seen the power at work once before a large group of Polesians had settled on the outskirts of the Mystic Mountain. We thought our human neighbors would trace us away as usual, but Mossman was in the area at the time. His moss flowers were blooming, too, and the humans didn't complain once. We were all quite happy. And that's where part one will end. There are like four or five more pages of this. Just this in the path of him trying to catch me. Stink or trying to catch Moss Man. 10 out of 10 for now. So, friends, thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell. Follow us on our social media, Funky Play Brothers, Funky Play Bros. Support our vlog, catch up, Dollar Sign, Funky Play Brothers. Thanks for watching. Bye.